Hi everyone, it's Maggie D. I'm back with another video. Today I'm doing no makeup makeup look for mature skin. This is a simple look. I'm going to go step by step through my favorite products that I currently have for my no makeup look for mature skin. So I hope this helps you out. I'm going to jump right in and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do with this no makeup makeup look for mature skin is put my sunscreen on. And I'm going to cheat a little and tell you I already did this <laughs> before I turned the camera on. Um, today I'm using Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. This is somewhat new to me and I like it pretty good. It is flesh color tinted sunscreen slash moisturizer. I like it. I give it about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes to settle down. And it's very slippery and emollient at first. And if I give it enough time, I don't know if you can see it, the shine goes away and then I'm ready to put my makeup on. So for my no makeup makeup look, I am just not comfortable without any foundation or coverage to even out my skin tone. So I use makeup, even though this is a no makeup makeup look, um, I use some foundation, some BB cream, something. Today I'm using actual foundation, Estee Lauder, Futurist Hydra Rescue. I think my color is called, my color is 2N1 Desert Beige. So um, this is not a new product, it's new to me, and I am liking it pretty well. It doesn't settle into my fine lines and wrinkles, if I'm careful. I'm going to put it on with this e.l.f. Camo Concealer Blending Sponge, even though I, this is foundation, I'm still going to use this little smaller sponge today. So I use one pump. And so I try to keep it really light to keep the no makeup look. So I go kind of like a cross on my face. And then I still have quite a bit left. So I'm using about half a pump. And it's hard. It, it seems hard to say no. The challenge is not putting the makeup on. The challenge is knowing when to stop putting the makeup on, in my opinion. Take some getting used to, if you're used to slapping on a full face of foundation every day, you're just gonna have to get used to looking at yourself in a little with a little different mindset. So, I still see flaws. I, still, I can pick out plenty. <laughs> Plenty of flaws, but I'm accepting it and telling myself it's going to be okay. It's okay. Because I don't want to look made up today. I'm staying away from my orbital circle here, staying away from the eyes. And then all this left over, it's tempting to put it here on my chest, or it's really tempting just to put it right here on my face. But I'm going to get a Kleenex, and I'm going to say no, and I'm going to wipe it off. So I barely have a little something on my face for, for um, evening out the color. Okay, now I'm going to move on, and I am going to use a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of concealer right here. Very small. Very small. I'm using my Color FX concealer, which I do like, Power Play, and my color happens to be P Light 2. And I'm using Angie's Hot and Flashy BK Beauty Brush. Two of those, three of those today, but the two that I'm going to use for concealer are the A505, which is just a paddle brush, small paddle brush. I have a lot of other ones that shape. And then this one is rather unique, the A506, which is her concealer blending brush. 
I'm liking it pretty good. I'm not in love with it. I'm glad I bought it. And I definitely think it's worth it. Well, I won't say I'm not in love with it. I, I like it a lot. <laughs> Is it the best thing ever? I'm not sure if it beats a sponge. I haven't quite decided. So in order to lighten this up and not put too much, I'm not putting my applicator on my eyes. I'm putting it on my hand. And then I'm going to take this paddle brush and put it on my eyes so that I can use the smallest amount possible. I'm not going to overthink this. I'm just going to blend it out because I don't have a whole lot of product on there. Less is more. I so want to put it on all the way. I really do. But it's going to make me look more made up. So I'm going to put another dot on my hand for the other side. And I'm going to take that. I think I have more here on this side. I definitely have more. That's all I use. And I might, if I have a little left over, I may do a little more on this side. And then whatever's left on my brush which is like almost nothing, <laughs> I'm going to spread around a little. It is basically nothing, but sometimes it's a tiny little brightening effect. I'm going to use whatever's left right here. I just need a little more on this side. And I, this is how I do it. I try to go down, I stay out of my bags. And then I always have this dilemma because with no makeup makeup look, I definitely have a birthmark. So I'm going to take whatever's left. I give myself special permission here to cover that up just a little. It's probably not going to make a lot of difference on the camera, but it's going to make a difference to me. And I'm also, by the way, I'm staying out of my magnifying mirror. I have to for this, for no makeup, makeup look. I can't look in the magnifying mirror because I will just want to keep covering things up, covering things up, covering things up. So moving on, um, I like to use on my, for my eyeshadow, I like this MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. It's a cream eyeshadow. It's very matte, M-A-T-T-E, and by MAC, M-A-C. And it's really designed, I like to kind of warm it up just a little, use my finger. It's really, originally was just going to be a base for eyeshadow. And people started liking it so much that it comes in all kinds of colors. So it definitely, you can find a neutral that works for you. This, I think, <laughs> is an age rewind. When I can get coverage just on my lids, most of them are hidden. Most of the lid is hidden when I open my eye, but when I'm looking around and talking, my blue veins aren't showing and my eyelids just look a little bit younger without looking made up at all. You have to get close, really close, to see that it's even eyeshadow. So I've been pretty happy with that. I'm skipping my eyeliner. It's hard to do. I want to do it. But I am going to do something to my eyebrows. Very light. I'm going to start with my micro um, eyebrow pencil, just a very small pencil. They, so many companies make this. This happens to be Benefits Brow Micro. I don't know the color offhand. I'll put it on the screen. I don't think it's that much better than anything else. You know what, what the problem is for me with these? It's um, oil, greasy eyebrows. If I go in too soon and the um, sunscreen hasn't had time to really settle in, because I do go into my eyebrows with the sunscreen, then not only settle in, but like dry. 
or cure is a better word. It's not like evaporation. It's the oil is in the emollient, whatever in the sunscreen is going away. It's like curing and setting. So anyway, if I go in too soon, these things just, they don't work much. And I am gonna use my magnifier for this. I'll probably skip ahead. I do, this is really OCD. <laughs> I count like 15, 15 strokes on each brow for my no makeup makeup. Because if I don't, I'll just sit here and keep going and going and going. I have these crazy looking like dark eyebrows and then the rest of it looks like I'm just wearing no makeup, basically. This is definitely less than I normally do. And then a very important step that I seem to skip sometimes and I always regret it is take your spoolie and soften it up. It makes all, it's such a small little step here, but it makes a world of difference. Okay, softened. I'm going to use some brow gel when I'm trying so hard to have a no makeup makeup look, which is really an art. It is, I think it's easier to just put on makeup than it is to put on makeup that doesn't quite look like makeup. And yeah, when you get up close, it's still going to look like makeup. But, you know, from like four or five feet away, the idea is to look like you have almost nothing on and you're just naturally gorgeous. And then I'm, I'm stopping. I'm not doing eyeliner. I'm not doing any more eyeshadow. They feel naked but they look better than they did. Okay, now this next one is more important than some of the other steps. As you get older, if you have mature skin or you're over 50 and you're doing a no makeup makeup look, is you've got to add some color back to your face. Whatever colors occur naturally. You can even squeeze your lip a little and look at that color. Or you can squeeze your pinky. You see I'm I'm berry, I'm pink. Pinkish, I'm not golden naturally. So anyway, my blush today, I'm using Bare Minerals Loose Blush. I'll give you the exact name and the color. Well, let's just look at the color real quick. The color is it's called Luminary Blush and whew, I can't see the color with my glasses. This is okay. I'm using it because it happens to be a color that I really like. And I'm using one of my favorite brushes of all time, Haiku Hodo. This happens to be Haiku Hodo Sephora Pro. It's I guess you might call it vintage. I bought them on eBay. Haiku Hodo is going strong. They're very pricey brushes, but um, they're, a few years ago they made a set, several individual Bo individually boxed brushes to sell at Sephora and they're all over eBay if you want them go get them because and they're still in the box they're new so I'm very careful I go up high and I'm just very careful with my blush no bronzer this is really all I have to add any color to my face so I'm being very 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 careful because you can add more and then I do put a little on my lids. Okay, so I have lips, and then the last thing is mascara. Lips are easy. Pick whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You can go, I mean, I would go like something with your natural color, but this is Fenty. It's a little warm for me. But I like it. And it's very subtle. No lip liner. So you, you probably have a lip look that you already know is almost invisible. You already know works for you. If you have a lot of feathering, use a clear lip pencil. It's just a tip or something you might want to try. I don't mean to sound so bossy today. 
Okay, and then the last thing is a little bit of mascara on my upper lashes only. And my, my most natural looking mascara is Neutrogena Healthy Lengths. It doesn't get them the longest or the most spectacular, but they look the most natural. Like, it's really almost hard to tell, I think, that they're not actually my lashes. Of course, I like to focus on the base and jiggle, and then I'm not going to let it dry and try to put on another coat. This is what I get is what I get. And I try very hard to stop before it gets out of hand and gets clumpy and spidery. So, knowing when to stop is just as important as knowing what products you want to put on. These just happen to be the ones I like to use right now for my no makeup makeup look. Done. So if I wasn't talking, this would go faster, but there is a difference between a no makeup makeup look versus five minute out the door. Five minutes out the door, you're not necessarily trying to be subtle. You're just trying to minimize the number of steps and the length of time it takes to get your face on. With the no makeup makeup look, you are intentionally trying to have a natural look. And sometimes you actually have to take a little more time to do that. If I put my foundation on with my hands, it doesn't look as natural. A brush doesn't look as natural. To me, the sponge works the best. And if I'm trying to use a foundation that's not a good match, forget it. I can't just go right here and right here. It, doesn't, it just doesn't look right. So, I hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial on no makeup, makeup look for mature skin. I'm Maggie D. I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching my channel. It just means the world to me. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.